Good. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. Anticipate that uh, this will be uh, approximately an hour in length, but I will leave plenty of time at the end for questions. I'm planning to do probably about 30 to 40 minutes of uh, getting started uh, stuff in the program. And then if you have questions as we're going along, type them into the chat and uh, I'll review that later. If uh, there's an opportunity to answer it while I'm going through the presentation, I will. Otherwise, I'll uh, wait until I get to the Q&A section at the end. So without further ado, let's go ahead. All right, so quick uh, disclaimer. Uh, the key points of this are that uh, I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not recommending any stocks. I may or may not hold positions in any stocks that we talk about. Uh, back testing has limitations, and of course, all trading involves risk. You need to do your own uh, due diligence. For those of you who don't know me, uh, and I have met quite a few of the people online here, so this um, may be a little redundant, but uh, I've been a professional software developer for over 20 years. I worked at Microsoft, which is the reason that uh, I'm now here in Seattle, uh, but I left there in uh, 2007. And I released a program that I had been uh, thinking about for uh, quite some time, and I worked on that uh, after I left Microsoft and released the program called Edge Racer in 2009. And then shortly after, 2010, I released the ETF Trading Bandit, which is a very specific set of uh, trading strategies. Uh, so today in the uh, product suite of Edge Racer, there is uh, Edge Racer Pro Unleashed and the ETF Trading Bandit, those two programs. We're going to be talking today about Edge Racer, the uh, Edge Racer Pro version, and uh, the very basic of uh, installation, not so much the actual mechanics of installation, but some of the things that you, you will see uh, as you first run the program. And um, I should bring this slide up. We'll talk about, uh, so this is very basic. So like a lot of people on here uh, know this stuff already, but thank you for coming anyway. And you might need a refresher. And it, you know, it's always good to, to hear it again because there are probably some things that uh, some little nuances that you may have missed. So uh, yeah, we're going to get into, it's going to be a basics uh, planning for next weekend, Saturday at the same time uh, to do a, to do a uh, kind of a level two webinar, which we'll get into uh, a little bit more detail. So if you want to sign up for that, I'll be sending a link out for that uh, later in the week, probably on Friday. But you can always go to the Edgerator website and there is a webinar link in the support page um, and it will be listed in there when available. So we're going to look at uh, symbol lists and data, as I said. We're going to look at uh, templates, what they are, how to run them, how to uh, produce reports from templates, how to look at charts once reports are produced, and uh, all of those mechanics. So it's very important uh, topics for uh, using Edgerator. And I've talked about templates. A lot of people know what they are, but just to refresh you, um, templates are, when I originally wrote the Edgerace software program, templates were not part of it. And it was designed as a, a tool to allow you to backtest and to uh, scan and find stocks of interest using, using, um, using scans that you would write yourself and put into the system. Now, a lot of people, it turned out, um, didn't want to go through that process of writing their own their own scans, and it's very understandable. It takes time, um, and it also takes a certain level of, uh, of of learning to learn the scan language and all that sort of thing. So, I introduced this idea of trading templates, where I would go and find the things that are, are of interest to Edgerator clients uh, and myself. Talk to the people who. Uh, already have uh, trading methods and systems, and then put that information into a template, which can then just be run, uh, we'll get into it in a, in a second, by the end user. And so all of that coding of the scans and the, uh, the formulas is all, has all been done uh, for you. And the template is the very easy way of running many different things. There are all kinds of different templates, but uh, we'll, we'll look into the basics of a template today. And then finally in the slide here, I have uh, an important location on the web for you to make a note of and remember. 
um, and it is the a shared folder location, which is something that I maintain on edgeracer.com called the uh, it's called the shared folder. If you go to that URL, you'll find yourself in a OneDrive location. Uh, so if you're typing in edgeracer.com forward slash shared folder, you'll come here. And so uh, whenever I'm publishing files that are too big to send via email, or if there are files such as symbol lists that, um, that I don't push out in the program, and there are a couple that I do push out in the program, but there are some extras in here. You can actually go into this shared folder location and see some extra information. And to download these, you just use your standard, um, it's a OneDrive technique, you just kind of highlight the things that you're interested in. And then there's a download button up here. If you're downloading multiple items, it downloads it as a zip file and you have to unzip it. Um, but if you just download a single item, it will just download the uh, file itself. And I'll show you exactly where to put this information once you've downloaded it. But that's a good, an important location to remember. It's the shared folder location, edraiser.com forward slash shared folder. Okay, so without Further, further ado, let's uh, go into the Edgerator program. Now, this is really a basics uh, webinar. So what I thought I would be interesting to show is what happens when you first install the program. And uh, that can be confusing to uh, some people. And you may actually end up in this situation if you ever have to reinstall the program. So. I think this is a useful thing to, uh, to show, but um, let's take a look at this. And hopefully you can see this screen, uh, maybe a little, may actually not be full screen right now, but let's just uh, see if we can fix that. Maybe we can't fix that. Okay, well, I'll just move this over here. So. Yeah, when you first install the software and you uh, run it, you'll end up with, the very first time it runs, you'll end up with this, uh, which can be confusing. But it's basically the installation of the program doesn't install any data for you. Or it doesn't, also, it doesn't install all of the templates that are in the system. That's an extra download step that, uh, that you would have to do. And so the program, when it first runs, it prompts you to, uh, to do a, a, the template download step. And so whenever you see a screen, your, your program, and you have a red highlighted area up here under my version of templates, if it's red, it means you don't have the latest version. And the latest version is indicated in the box above there, where here it says 2019.4. That's the latest template version that's available right now. But the version that when you first install the program is zero because you don't have any templates at all. As you go through the process and every month you'll get a new template, then that number will increment, but this box will turn red and you can re-download it. So when you're presented with this, what you have to do is just click this download and install button here. It's gonna download the latest templates and get everything set up for you. When it says download complete, Here's what you have to do. You click OK here, and then you'll notice that your uh, high menu here is turned green, so that's good. But now you don't have to download and reinstall. This has been done. You have to now cancel out of this box because everything is ready for you. And then you'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen, the templates have been downloaded, and so you should have this template library uh, on the right-hand side. Now, it's possible if you've installed previously and you've um, played around with your layout of this screen that this may be collapsed. And you may have the template library over here on the, on the right. So, but I, when I run a program, I always like to have this pinned out so it's always out and I always know um, that it's there. And then the library is split into two columns. It's essentially the category column, which is your overriding overall topic. Um, and then within, when you click on, single click on one of these categories, you'll find to the left of there when it's, uh, you've got all of the templates that are in that category. Now what's new is a special category 
in that it doesn't contain runnable templates, but it just contains informational templates describing what's new for those particular months. And so you can always see what has been released. If you haven't seen the program in a while, uh, you can go back in here and just take a look and find out what has been released. Whenever you click on the Get Latest Templates button, it will download everything anyway, so you'll have everything. But um, you may want to go and investigate some of those new templates. And so the way that you do that, I said that these weren't the favorites categories, just informational. So for instance, I'm clicking on April here, I can see what's new for April is the uh, Gil Morales Undercut and Rally template, which I we did the webinar on last weekend, which is available as a replay. If you go to the AdgeRator website, you'll be able to see the replay of that uh, in there. So the information that you get in here tells you where the template is in the system. So the category says it's under the Morales and Catcher category. And so in order to run that template, you, you have to go and find that category. So let's just uh, follow through with that. So what we do is we just scroll down through here. You see these are all the categories, hot topics category, pro tools category, linear regression category. I come all the way down until I find, and the, the Morales and Cache category is a little bit uh, tricky to see because it's just the cover of their book. Um, but once you click on there, you'll see the templates in that category and the undercut and rally template is here. And therefore I can select it just by single clicking on the template itself and it will appear in, uh, in, on the main screen here. So I can see that template. Now, obviously there are a lot of templates in the system and you wouldn't wanna to have to go into all these categories every time you run the program. So a quick way to find things that you use uh, frequently is just to highlight the little favorites arrow, uh, star, sorry, beside the template. And once you've highlighted the favorites, then this template will actually appear in the favorites category. So now I've highlighted favorites. This is the template um, in there. And to remove a template from your favorites category, you just kind of uh, uncheck that. Uh, next time you come into favorites, it's disappeared. Uh, but say you, uh, uh, say you liked uh, several of these templates, you put a little star by them, they'll be in your favorites category. Next time you run the program, they'll always be here. And you may not have that many templates that you run every day, so um, this is a very nice way of, of keeping them in uh, one location. So your, the other thing to note is when you first load the program, no data has been downloaded. And you can tell that because on the left, where date, you normally see your symbol lists and data, data normally appears down here in this blank area, um, it's blank. And then it also says choose the symbol list. Now there is, yes, these are the lists that get shipped with the program. Uh, some of these are kept up to date in terms of their contents. You know, uh, a list contains symbols and um, there are two lists that actually get updated whenever the program is updated. One of them is the All USA list and the other one is the CBOE weeklies list. The other lists were lists that were generated at some point in the past, and so therefore the, the components of those lists may change over time, but they're not kept in sync um, with the program. They're just there really as examples. Um, one thing that is uh, still valid is the high probability ETF trading book ETFs. Uh, if I select that, um, then uh, that's the list of, of 20 ETFs that are used in the, uh, the high probability ETF trading book. But again, you see there's no data in the, here. This is a blank area over here, which is, is, can, can be confusing. But all it means is that, that you haven't downloaded data for those symbols. There are symbols there, but you haven't downloaded data for them. So let's talk about uh, uh, how you set up your data. So when you first install the program, there is this idea of a, a global data provider. It's the it's the default data provider, the one place that EdgeRater goes to get data whenever you do a end of day update. Um, the one default place, and there are ways of overriding that per list, but let's talk about that one default place. So I go to the home 
section in the menu. You see there are two tabs at the top here. There's the templates tab, which is your, your tab that's active when you first run the program. And then there's the home uh, tab up here. It gives you another set of menu options. The thing to do in here is click, click on your data providers. When you first install the program, your data provider default is EdgeRater. But there are other um, defaults that you could select if you have a desire to get data from places other than EdgeRater. Um, but I would recommend keeping it set to EdgeRater unless you have um, one of the other programs that, that uh, you use mainly for your data, um, such as um, HDSI. If you had installed HDSI, that's a, that's a separate program. That would appear in here as a, an option for your default data provider. But most people were going to have um, EdgeRater in here as, as their default. And I would recommend keeping it that way. So what that means is, because it's your default, whenever you create a brand new symbol list, it will be associated with the EdgeRater data provider. And then whenever you do an update of that data, it's going to fetch data from our EdgeRater servers. OK, so that's setting your global um, data provider. Now, each individual list could have its own separate data provider over overriding the default provider. Um, now, the way to see the, the list configurations is once you've highlighted a list, I'm going to highlight the allusa.txt list. And this is, for, from the EdgeRater data, data provider, all of the stocks that are provided with the EdgeRater data provider. There's a little pencil icon here, which is your edit list icon. This is very useful. I use this all the time. And it basically brings up this box here which is your configuration for this symbol list. It contains a list of all of the symbols. It contains uh, the description for those symbols in the first tab. Uh, and it also has this data provider section, which is set to EdgeRater right now. That's your default provider. But on a per list basis, you could override that and say, well, I want this particular list to get data from this provider. And another list uh, you could have you could actually have the exact same list of symbols, but you could configure it to get data from, say, Yahoo. Um, if you decide to do that for any reason, I don't really see a, a, a good reason to do that. Other than the one thing that comes to mind is the EdgeRacer data provider is US stocks only. So if you are looking for Canadian stocks that are available on Yahoo, you would create your list of Canadian symbols and set this data provider for that list to be getting from, from Yahoo. Another important uh, thing to remember, this is key for using the program. If you're ever wondering about the data that you have for your list when you run a template, because the templates will run over whatever, date, whatever list you have selected, and obviously whatever data is in that list. So if you're ever wondering what data is contained in that list, go to the data snapshot tab over here. And this is now telling you for all of those symbols that are in the symbol list, does it actually have any data associated with it? Well, right now you can see that this is, is empty because we haven't done our very first download, which we need to, uh, to do. Okay, so we can see that the symbol is contained in the list, but it's not contained in the data snapshot. And you don't have any if uh, you'll see when I when I update this, you'll see the from and the to date, which will indicate how much data we have for each of those symbols. And then the third important tab for a list is the data update options. And it's by default, it will have a, it will only fetch the latest two years of data, but um, it's probably a good idea to expand this up a bit. I like to kind of have a 10 year history, but you could put the entire history if you wanted. I, we don't have any more than. Uh, um, you know, 50 years of data, so you could put the entire database in there if you if you wish. Just bear in mind that the more data you have with a particular list, when you run a template, it's just going to take a little bit longer to run because it's um, it will be processing all of that data for all of those symbols. Um, but as a good kind of um, thing to have, I like to have 10 years of data in in here. Okay, so once I've got that configured for a list, all I have to do is hit either this button here, which says update data. Okay. 
Um, and before I do that, let me just say, if you've made any changes to this, such as changing the data provider or changing the number of years of data that you're going to get, press save. I will save that configuration for you so that next time you bring up this dialog box, you have all of those configuration parameters still there. Now, ways to actually, so I've just done the configuration. Now, the way to actually get the data is uh, to press the update data button. And there, obviously, you can press it in this dialog box here. Or you don't have to do that. You could press it once you have the list selected over here, press the end of the update. Or the third uh, option is in the home menu up here, click on your symbol lists button. And this will now um, bring up a dialog box which shows you all of the symbol lists that are in the system. And you can do a bulk update of all of the symbols by select all of the symbol lists by selecting them all and then just saying update list data. And that will just go out to every list's data provider individually, fetch the data for that list and uh, populate it into the program. And um, so I'm going to first of all do, because this is the first thing I think you should do when you first install the program, select your all USA list, press the end of the update button here. And the very first thing it will do, look at the lower portion of the screen in the left hand side, it will say downloading full data version. Um, pay attention to that, full data version. So what that's doing is it's actually getting the entire database from our server, because this is the first time you've run the program, uh, you have no data. So now it's downloading the entire database. It doesn't matter how many years you had selected in the um, configuration, it's gonna download everything to your hard drive. Um, and that's your master database. Each individual list that's associated with the edge rate of data provider will get its data from <clears throat> this master database. So as you can see, the very first time you do it, it's taken, it's probably gonna take a minute or so. It's nearly complete now. Um, <clears throat> but as you run this the, tomorrow, well not tomorrow, because that's obviously uh, Sunday, but if you run this on Monday evening after your end of day data there has been updated, this will do a partial download and it will only download the updated symbols and it will be much faster. So the very first time you do it, it does take um, a little bit longer. So the first thing it does is it downloads the full data, which is it's done. It's now unzipping that because that came down in a compressed format. Uh, so we'll just wait for this to complete. And now it's applying the full update version, which is just done. Uh, and now it's one other step it has to do is it has to now build a data snapshot for this list that's been selected up here. So it's basically the, what it's doing right now is it's going to that master database and just extracting the uh, symbols for this symbol list and the data for this symbol list. <clears throat> and that's nearly finished. And when that's done, you should now magically see this area is now populated with the uh, symbols. And the thing to pay attention to here is the two column. This is, indicates the date um, of the latest data point that is in this uh, symbol list, in this, in this uh, symbol list snapshot, which is 5-10-2019, which was Friday's close. Um, if you now, you could click on, uh, you don't have to do this, but click on the edit button and you'll see that the data snapshot area has now been updated. So you can see that the list contains the symbol, the data snapshot contains data from, and it will tell you the time period, you know, 511, 2009 to 510, 2019. So this is 10 years of data contained in this data snapshot. Also, I like to point out where this data is stored because it is stored on your hard drive in your, in your documents uh, folder. So let's take a look at where that is. <clears throat> do, do, do. Okay. Um, excuse me one second. So 
Sorry about that. Uh, right, wait be a sec. Just trying to... I have so many screens going on here. Uh, it could be confusing. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just showing a <clears throat> file explorer window from Windows. And this is your documents folder. You'll, you know, everyone knows how to navigate in File Explorer to their documents folder. And when you install the software, Edgerator will actually create a subfolder in your documents folder called Edgerator. And this will contain several other subfolders. If you ever um, want to move a configuration from one computer to another computer, and the configuration will be everything with the software. It will be symbol lists. It will be the way that you set up your own personal charts, um, uh, all of your templates, if you've got your own personal templates, everything is contained in this Edgerator folder and subfolders. Um, the thing that we just did by downloading data was we <clears throat> open up the snapshots folder and you'll see what, uh, what's happened in here. There's a master folder, which is the main database that I mentioned that was downloaded. That's about um, a gigabyte in size. And then you've got the All USA snapshot, which is 10 years of data from that, um, from that master database. And then uh, the system also, when you first install the software, uh, comes with a sample data uh, database, which is just a, uh, some old history of symbols if you just want to play around with the way the software works without actually having up-to-date data. Okay, so the snapshots folder is interesting to look at. That's where the data is stored just so you know. The symbol lists folder is where the actual lists of symbols are stored. So you can click on there. This is your entire uh, list of symbols. It should match. If you go to the program and you click on this drop down arrow over here on the left hand side, the lists that appear in here all you say, high probability ETF, trading book ETFs, sample data, sector ETFs, etc., should match with the list of symbols uh, or files that are in here. And what do these look like? Let's open one up. So this is a notepad view of the file. It's just basically a symbol, um, comma, and then the name of the name of the stock. So if you want to create your own symbol lists, you just need to create um, a file in this format. That's kind of the, um, <laughs> that's kind of the high, high uh, that's maybe a harder way to create a list if you are not familiar with, with the way Windows works and creating files and, and copy pasting to that, uh, but it is quicker to do it that way. If you, if you have a lot of symbols you want to put into a list, this is, this is the quickest way to go. If on the other hand, you uh, want to use the, pr the program features to create a new list, you would just go and over here on the left hand side say new. And now I'm creating a new list and I can type the symbols in one by one. So I can say I want uh, Microsoft, oh this is Microsoft. And uh, I'll save that. Save as, so it's asking me what I want that to be called. And it's, I'm just gonna call this my list. So this is the harder way to do it in terms, of, it's easier in terms of the uh, user interface, but it's, it's Obviously, um, there's a lot of typing for me to do here to type in all these lists, these uh, symbols. Now, I've typed in, um, uh, oh yeah, what you should do is as you're typing this in Microsoft and Microsoft, make sure you press the enter key. I'll put in uh, G-O-O-G-L, that's uh, Alphabet, Google. Press the enter key, so they appear down here. Press the save button. And now I want to fetch data for these symbols. I'll just press the uh, update data button. And there we go, we've got, we've got this list filled in. So that, by doing that in the user interface, I've now created a my lists file in the file system down here, you can see. If I open that up, you can see it's Microsoft and Google, but that was a way to do it through the user interface. If I then selected that list in here on this drop down. You see, I've just got Microsoft and Google, and the data goes through to 510 2019. And so now 
if I'm ever running a template, I'm running it on uh, just those two symbols because I ha have that list selected. So that's the way that uh, symbol lists and data work. One of the lists I like to use is the CBOE weeklies list. And I'll just update this date. Let me just first of all check in here, see what we have. We've got, this is configura configured for the edge racer data pr provider. And it's got two years. I like to change these to 10, just to give some of the templates do require more, more than two years of data. Um, for instance, the uh, seasonality templates don't really work very well with just a couple of years of data. Uh, and you would probably want to have 10 or more years of data for seasonality. So uh, I'll set this to 10, save that, and then I'll just uh, click on the update data button, build in the snapshot. Doesn't have to download the master database anymore because it's already done. And now this is populated with uh, 10 years of data. And the number of symbols in here is 523. The two lists that are kept up to date, every time you receive a new update of the program, once a month, which um, the update is is uh, coincides with, with a template release normally, unless there's other features that are being added. Then what you do is um, what, was I <laughs> what was I saying about that? Oh yes, the lists that are kept up to date. So once you've done the monthly uh, or when you run the program, if there is an update, the program will automatically update for you when you run the program. You'll see a little screen. It will say, um, there's an update. Um, there's an update. We're just updating your, your software. And then it will run after the updates available. Uh, and the two lists that are kept up to date with that are the All USA list. So if there have been symbols that have been added, you know, such as Lyft recently is a, a IPO, Uber, um, IPO on Friday. Uh, the Uber isn't in that master database yet, but it will be um, probably in the next week uh, be in there. And uh, so those things are, those the components of those lists are kept up to date with uh, on a monthly basis. <clears throat> so I also do an update of the CBOE weeklies list. And this is all stocks that have weekly options. I get that information from the CBOE website compile a list of those stocks and, and put it into the program. And so I think um, just personally, this list represents uh, a list of stocks that are, are well known. Um, if they have weekly options associated with them, it means they have uh, good liquidity. The options are generally uh, have good spreads. Um, and then, and so this is a, an interesting list to uh, run against. It's also only 523 stocks. And so, it, you know, it removes a lot of the, say, really low-priced stocks that are in the All USA list. And I think it's a good uh, representation of stocks to, uh, to run against. Okay, so that's, uh, that is the basics of uh, uh, symbol lists, data, how to download templates, where to find uh, the individual templates in your, in your categories, uh, et cetera. And now, what I'll show is over here. What I'll show is if you are running this program, you've already got your, your master database because you did that, uh, say, yesterday. But now it's a brand new day, and you find that you've run the program, and you know there's data to 510 2019, but your list is only says 59 2019 because I haven't yet on this program. This is actually another computer I'm showing you right now. Doesn't have the update for Friday. So all I would do here is just press the end of the update button and watch when I do this. The uh, lower left, you'll see this should say partial update. Check in the server for updates. Downloading partial update, now it's done. So you see that was a lot quicker than doing the full, um, the full master update. So it's downloaded the partial, but now it's applying that partial update. So it's going through uh, the partial update just contains the changes, additions, deletions, um, if there are any splits that need to be uh, put into the system and uh, adjusted and dividends that need to be adjusted. That's all taken care of at this stage. Okay, so now it's, uh, now it's doing that application. 
uh, and adjusting the master database based on the new the new data that's available uh, as of Friday. So I'm getting into kind of a lot of detail about this data, and uh, I don't want to scare you. Don't think this is this is complicated. This is something that you, at the end of the day, when you come to do this, it's really just a matter of pressing this this uh, end of day update button, and everything is taken care of for you. But I just wanted to go into the details in case you want to uh, know what's going on, and if you have any issues, um, you'll be able to take a look at the areas that I've talked about to see what they might be. <clears throat> okay, so that is my partial update has been applied. I've now got data through to 5.10.2019. I'm all up to date and I'm ready to run my templates. So here's the next section. And it is, we're going to talk about running a template and we're going to talk about charts that are linked to those templates. I'm only going to run one template here, and this template you'll find if you scroll down through your categories, uh, come to the linear regression category. There's only one template in there. It's called linear regression standard deviation channel, channel analysis. Now this is one of the original templates from the system. It's still uh, one of the more popular templates, and it, it's very powerful, but it's gonna allow me to show how to run a template, how to do sorting and filtering, and how to look at charts. So we'll use this as, as the example. So all you do is you select the template over here on the right, make sure this main area now has the template um, highlighted, and then come up to where it says run template and just press run. It's very quick. It's gonna run it against whatever list you have over here. I have the, obviously the CBOE weeklies list this is the result. Now this is, uh, this is a report, a template whenever you run it produces a report. And there's a lot of information on this report. Um, it does look a little uh, scary if you're not uh, familiar with uh, what this is showing, but it's very simple to uh, get the idea of. And I'll just go through what this is, what this is showing. So the report lists per row, every, sim every symbol is in the rows of the report. And then this report for a linear regression analysis is organized into sets of columns. So you've got columns E through H, which are your five day linear regression column. You've got sections, uh, uh, columns I through L, which are your 10 day or two week linear regression. M through P is a one month regression. And these are just repeated in, in terms of what they're showing. So you only really have to understand one of these sets of columns to know what's going on here. And these are just different time periods for the uh, linear regression. Okay, so I'll expand that up a bit so we can see what's going on. Um, now, if you are in any report that's produced from a template and you come to a particular cell and double click on it, what will happen is a new window will pop up and it came on my other screen which is a chart window. And the chart window is a chart, obviously, of the stock row that you clicked on. And the, the layout that comes with, that comes on the chart, the, the, the indicators that are appearing on the chart are passed to the chart from the template. So that's one of the unique and um, cool features of the program is very powerful. Let me put these two things side by side so we can see what's going on. Okay, by default, you're gonna have a little icon here which says edge event. Don't worry too much about that. It's just pointing to the bar that is the last day of your, of your report. Um, and the reason that it points to it is that sometimes you've, you run reports not for today, but you might go back in history and say, I want to run this, this uh, template um, at a certain point in history. And then this annotation will point to the bar that you ran the report for. So you can turn the annotation off where it says show annotations up here. And you can just uh, turn that off if it's uh, getting in the way. All right. Now the chart itself is... Well, first of all, I'm just going to show you that as I click on different areas of this report, the 
chart will, the actual layout of this one will change. Right here, I'm clicking in the 10 day linear regression um, set of columns. And therefore, this is the linear regression channel that's shown here is a 10 day channel. If I go further across the report and go to the, the um, say the nine month linear regression column, now on the same stock, I've got a nine month linear regression channel. Uh, if I go back to say a three month, okay, same stock, but now this is a three month linear regression channel. So it's just showing that a template, a report is actually linked to its own chart layout, which is very key because a lot of the reports are specially written around trading ideas involving certain indicators. Obviously it'd be nice to see those indicators on the, on the chart whenever you're investigating a report. All right. So that's the very first thing to know. Bring up a, you can bring up the chart by double clicking on a cell or the other option is uh, there is a view charts button in the report basically does the same thing. It pops up a little chart window, but the quickest way to get there is to double click on the, on the cell. The quickest way to scroll through the stocks that are in your report is to use your keyboard. Uh, you can use the mouse and you can just select individual ones as you're, as you're interested. Or the quicker way is just to use your keyboard down arrow and just scroll down through the list and it scrolls very, very quickly. Okay. So the next thing to know is we've got, uh, let's talk a little bit about this, this template and what it's showing. Cause this is, as I said before, this is a, a quite an interesting, uh, an interesting template. Linear regression is basically it's a mathematical way of showing, um, the direction over a certain period of time uh, of of progress of uh, say close prices of a stock, but linear regression also uh, and it's, it draws that line using a least squares mathemat mathematical method uh, to show that. So that is uh, basically linear regression, and then associated with that there is a volatility. And the volatility now gives you the opportunity to draw standard deviation bands around the regression channel. And this template is really showing both those things, the, the linear regression line and the uh, standard deviation uh, bands, which is the uh, green line and the black line. So one thing that you can do uh, to organize this, re this report to see things that are of interest is you could say, look at the three month uh, linear regression column. Uh, you have an annualized percent uh, field and our annualized percent column. And to sort any report in EdgeRater, you just single click on the column header. So as I single click, you, you can see that the report is either sorted um, ascending, ascending or descending. Uh, and it just changes every time I do that single click. Don't double click because you're just going to get back to the same, <laughs> the same uh, sort direction that, that you had originally. All right. So if you want to sort by annualized percent, now I've got the stocks that have the highest annualized percentage growth are now towards the top of the list. But this is based on a three month, uh, a three month time period. So, and it's also the way this is calculated. It's based on projecting the linear regression line uh, over a one year period and finding out what the growth would be in the, in the stock. A uh, couple of other things are interesting uh, here is that, well, first of all, you have a direction up or down. Uh, secondly, there's this bandwidth and percent B. Now it's kind of taken a little bit of a liberty from, uh, from Bollinger band terminology here. Uh, it's drawn standard deviation bands around the linear regression line. And the bandwidth is really the distance between, <clears throat> between the upper and lower line um, as a, but not just pure distance. It's, it's um, 
uh, normalized so that you can relate different stocks to find uh, to find uh, good bandwidths. So if, for instance, you were looking for stocks <clears throat> that had a very narrow bandwidth, meaning that there was a very uh, very good consistency in the in the linear regression, you can actually sort now by by bandwidth as well. So now I'm looking at, at um, very low bandwidth uh, uh, securities, so stocks and ETFs, whatever's in the list. And you can see now you have a more consistent uh, line. But what you can also do is combine these different fields together. And you would do that using, you can either sort, um, but sometimes sorting isn't the, only, only, isn't the way to get what you want. You can also do filtering. So you see each of these little uh, drop-down arrows in a report. These appear on most reports, and they allow you to do a filter uh, of that particular column. So say, uh, let's go to back to annualized percent. Now let me say I'm only interested in the stocks that have an annualized percentage growth. And as you drop down this arrow, you see a whole bunch of choices for doing your filtering for the, for the column. Um, and I'm going to do a sort, which is number filter. And I'm going to say greater than. And I'm going to say greater than 100% annualized growth. And now I'm going to, uh, now this list has been filtered so to only show me the, uh, the stocks that have a greater than 100%. And now if I do a sort in terms of bandwidth, now I'm looking at stocks that have uh, more than 100% annualized growth, but also very narrow bandwidth. Um, so these are things that are moving up consistently at a high rate. Uh, another in interesting column, uh, and it's the last column essentially in this, in this group of four, is the uh, percent B column. And this just tells, gives you an indication of where the close price is currently in relation to the upper and lower um, linear regression line. And I promise I'm going to finish in a second, open up for questions. Um, so percent B, if percent B is 100%, it means the, the close price is the top of the channel. If it's at 0%, it means it's at the bottom of the channel. Um, so if you were interested in stocks that were towards the lower end of a rising linear regression line, you would basically look for things that are in the low range. Okay, so here's a good example. So now we've got 121% annualized percent growth, a narrow channel, and the percent B value is 3%, which means that the price of the stock is now towards the lower end of the rising channel. So that's a, you know, that's a good way of, uh, of, if you're looking for those types of things, that's a good way of uh, finding it. If you see something that's negative 25%, that means it's below the lower channel. Okay, it's fallen, it's fallen out. Um, <clears throat> linear regression is an, one of the interesting indicators that actually changes. The history of it changes as uh, new bars are produced. So you can never use this as a, as a back testing tool because, uh, or for back, you can never use the linear regression indicator in, in, uh, in back testing because it changes uh, on a day by day basis. So tomorrow, what I mean is tomorrow, if the, or on Monday, if the stock opens down, say in the 52 range, this linear regression line will be redrawn at a different angle and, and therefore the history of it will have changed. So just bear that in mind. There's a couple of indicators that are like that. Uh, linear regression is one and the zigzag is, is the other one. But they're very useful for finding the current state of, of things. Okay, so that's basically how you would uh, uh, look for things of interest. Now, any report that you run, any template that you run produces a report and you can manipulate them in exactly the same way. Uh, one thing that's super cool, and I don't think a lot of people know about this, is if you have found something through your running of template, and for instance, if you're interested in uh, you know, you see here UCO, the uh, crude oil ultra ETF, uh, UC, uh, UCO. 
you look at this and if you were to think that you're now at the lower end of a rising channel, this is interesting. So you might say, I'm going to, I want to monitor this going forward. So what you can do is click on the add to favorites button. And what happens is <clears throat> you get a, a favorites watch list. Uh, it will indicate the source. So it's the linear regression template this came from. It has the symbol and the name, the date that you ran the report, the close price on the date that you ran the report. And the chart that you're looking at is also um, pinned in here too. And if you have a spe specific comment you want to make so that in the future you can go back and take a look at um, this list, you can quickly scroll through this list like any other report um, at any point in the future and see what has happened to your stocks since you made that note. So you could say in your comments, you don't have to say anything for a comment, but you could say um, at lower end of rising channel. Now, as I uh, click through this report, if I have the annotations turned on, which I said before, remember it, where it said edge events, I can turn these annotations with this little button here, show annotations or not. Now, um, if you had multiple of these in this favorites list and you scroll down through them, you'd get this exact same chart shown and uh, the little indicator telling you what, what the note was that you made. So it's very useful to keep track of things because as you go through uh, reports and you're looking at stocks, you see thousands and thousands of stocks and uh, it's impossible to remember everything. So just click on the add to favorites and uh, it's right there for looking at in the future. Uh, okay, so I believe that's the last thing I wanted to cover in this in this this basics, and I'm going to take a look at uh, questions. If you have any questions, please type them in. And there were some from earlier, so I'm just going to go back through. Um, okay, so so can the software be installed on a portable hard drive? Well. The answer to that question is when you install the software, it will put the data and the that edge rater folder that I showed you will always go into your um, documents folder, wherever that documents folder is. If you have your documents folder on a portable hard drive, um, which is possible to do, then it would be installed there. The actual application itself goes into you know, you'll probably the standard Windows um, area where, where applications go. Um, it's kind of hidden from from you, but the actual documents and the configuration side of it, that's the thing that is uh, in your documents folder. And the size of that, as I said, the, uh, the master database is about a gigabyte. Uh, every time you run a report, let me show you. Okay, uh, it's on my other screen, so I'm just going to show you this. Every time you run a report, the reports folder of the edge rater folder will actually contain that report. So this can this this will just grow and grow. Um, but but if there are reports you don't need, you can just delete them. And occasionally, I just go in here and just delete all of my reports. Um, but it's they're just there uh, in case you want to go and find something that you ran before. The thing is, though, you can always go, go back and rerun a report, so you don't really need to keep the uh, the actual report unless you've modified it and saved it and made annotations to it. Um, so in total, the amount of user data uh, depends on how many symbol lists you have. It depends on how many reports you've run, uh, etc. But I would say it's no more than uh, no more than two gigabytes. You've got a gigabyte for your master data, and then another gigabyte would be plenty. Uh, okay, another question. If I update the all USA list, do I also need to update other lists such as S&P 1500 list to run the buckets report? Okay, so let's bring back up. Let's bring back up this. And uh, so if you're on all USA list and you click the update button just for this one list, 
it's going to uh, do two things. First thing it's going to do is update your master list. It's all the stocks in the system. And the second thing is it's going to take the information from uh, the master list in order to build a snapshot for, for uh, all USA. If you have another list, say your S&P 1500 list, it's not going to be that particular list uh, has its own data snapshot. Um, but it's not going to automatically update when I, when I just updated the all USA list. If on the other hand, I had gone into the home menu on the symbol lists and I had said, I'm going to select everything in here and then update list data, then all of the lists will get, will get updated. Now, if you're running your uh, poll, I know that uh, you have HDSI and you have the software linked to HDSI. So your S&P 1500 list would, let's just go and see here, your S&P 1500 list would be, just as mine is, linked to the HS, HGSI data provider. And so when I click on the update of this list, it's going to get fetched data from HGSI. So it depends if you've updated your HGSI data, then you'll get uh, the data from there. Um, so I know a lot of people use this symbol lists to update everything at once. Um, personally, I, I personally only ever pay attention to the, the all USA and the CBOE weeklies mostly. I mean, that's not hundred percent true, but mostly I'm only looking at these two lists. Um, and that's mainly because I'm running, um, developing new templates all the time. And, uh, I just use those as my test, my test cases. And so, uh, CBOE weekly is I quite like, and, uh, uh, you know, it's a cut down version of a list. Things can run a lot faster. And so I'll just, uh, normally just update that individual list. Um, can you edit a template? Good question. Good question. Templates are designed to be edited, it's true. Uh, let's see, let's bring up a, um, all right, let's show, let's see, documents, edge grader, and then if you come to, in documents edge grader, there is a subfolder called Edge Club, and then in there, there's a subfolder called System. So let's take a look at that. I know you can't see it right now. I'm just going to bring it up. Okay, there it is. All right, so Documents, Edge Rater, Edge Club, System. Edge Club is really the, a, a subfolder. Um, the idea when I started to produce templates on a monthly basis was that there is that's part of the Edge Club and you'll get these new templates on a monthly basis, providing you're, you're still in the, the Edge Club. Um, now, when you, first, when you buy the program, you'll get all of the templates that exist uh, currently to the point that you bought the program. You'll also get a, a year's worth of new templates. You'll be a member, essentially, of the Edge Club for a year. Um, and then after a year, if you want to continue to receive templates uh, and get the updated Edge Rated data, um, there's a, uh, it's currently a three, less than $300 per year to uh, get a new template every month and uh, connect to the edge rated data. So anyway, an edge club system is where the system templates are. Every time you do a download, let me sh uh, just remind you what I'm talking about. If you're in the templates tab over here, every time you get latest templates, even if you, you have the latest templates, like I have right now, everything up to date, I could download and reinstall templates, potentially I've accidentally changed a template that's in the system folder uh, and I want to get back to the way that um, EdgeRater has it configured, I would, I would do that step and get re-download the templates. So that does give you the idea that you don't want to change anything that's in the system folder. So the undercut and rally template that we talked about last week is you'll find it in here, undercut and rally. Um, in order to edit a template, you do need to have Microsoft Excel because these templates are actually um, Excel files. It's just that EdgeRater can understand how to read Excel files and how to produce reports in Excel format. Um, so if I look at this in Excel, I'll show you exactly what it is. It's basically an Excel file. And the important part of the template is the report area. 
here. Um, and if I, I've hidden some things in here. So if I, if I unhide a couple of rows, it's now these things that are uh, grayed out are the links essentially to, uh, to edge rated data. So um, if I come over to the right hand side here, this template is all based on data coming from a script in the system called uh, template uh, GM UAR vals. And then these are the individual data points that are coming from that script. So you can write your own scripts for sure in the program. You can uh, then put all of the data points. Uh, you configure them like this and put them into the software, into a template, into an Excel file. And once you've done that, of course, you have to save it in a certain location that doesn't overwrite uh, the system folder. And the way, the where, where to save that is, let me show you file, I save a copy, and I'll save a copy into just the root edge club folder, not, not system, but just edge club. And I'll call this my special template. Okay, so this is now my special template. Um, and what we'll have to do is, uh, and because I did this, I'm just going to have to, every time you create a brand new template, you actually have to rerun the edge rater. Um, if you're modifying a template, there's no, not necessarily to rerun the program. It will just pick up the changes. But if you're creating a brand new one, in order for it to pick up that new file, uh, you need to rerun the template. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, there seems to be a bug in uh, in that program. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, great. Let's see why that is. Sorry about that. There was definitely a bug there. I haven't actually seen that bug before. Anyway, you see the my special template is here, and what will what would normally happen is this then appears under the category of my templates. Uh, and actually, let me just go a little bit more into this. Not too much. What you would want to do in this template is look at the parameters worksheet. Change the name to be whatever you're calling it. My special template. That's the name that will appear under the in the, uh, in the uh, eight. That's the name that will appear in the category. And the chart layouts tab in the template. And we can do another webinar on templates, uh, modifying templates uh, specifically. So I think it's an important topic. This is really just giving you an idea that yes, you can modify your own templates. You can create brand new ones too. And the um, chart layouts tab of the template is really how it links the individual cells of the report to their own specific uh, layout in the, in the charting. And then I always put a template info tab in here, which explains what the template does. Uh, and it might contain links to other sites uh, to get more information about this particular technique. Uh, obviously, if you're creating your own template, you'd change this to whatever you need. Anyway, we'll get into that uh, in another in another webinar. Sorry about that. I went I went a bit long on that one. Um, the, the, um, okay, what about Think or Swim data feed? Ah. Right. Let's come over to here. Sorry, I'm gonna. Um, Excuse me one second. I have to just get this running. Sorry about that. We've gone a bit long here too, um, but I would do want to get through these questions.
uh, while I'm doing it, I'll just we'll answer a couple of other questions. Is there a charge for the edge rated data? Uh, well, as, as I said before, you do have edge rated data included for a year after you have bought the program. Um, if you are a subscriber, a monthly subscriber or an annual subscriber to the program instead of, instead of uh, owning the program outright, that's included. Um, but if you own the program outright, but you continue to want to get data and templates, there's a less, it's uh, less than $300 per year to uh, get that. Um, can we have edge rated on several computers? Yes, you can install on multiple computers. There is a limit of max um, concurrently three. If you have more than three, um, let me know because I can uh, make a change to the server to allow that, that too. Uh, adding column to symbol lists. Not quite sure what that means. Um, symbol lists contain the symbol and the description of the symbol. So just basically two columns in there. Can you import symbol lists from HDSI? Yes, and it's very easy. In fact, um, super easy. Uh, I'm not going to show that right now, but you can do it. Uh, there is a video on the the hookup to uh, to HDSI for the for the HDSI users. If you go to the Edge Rater website. Okay, I'm on the Edge Rater website here. If I go to support page and I look at view the videos, you're going to go to the uh, Edge Rater YouTube channel. And in here, if you just do a search for HGSI within the Edge Rater uh, channel, you'll find um, a couple of videos on how to use. Edge Rater with HGSI. So this one, Edge Rater for HGSI users, talks about that hookup to uh, to data. So take a look at that. Uh, when backing up, which folders? If you're going to back up your whole computer, uh, move it to another computer. Just just back up the whole of the documents Edge Rater folder hierarchy. So you just come in Documents Edge Rater, back that up you'll have everything you need. What I would do then is install Edge Racer on the new computer. It will recreate a bunch of those files for you. Um, but then there are certain ones that you'll want to copy over, such as symbol lists that you've uh, created and any templates that you've created should be then copied over to the right folder from your backup. Um, let's see. Ah, so to download the program, you would go to the uh, the Edge Rater, woo, the Edge Rater website. <laughs> Surprising. Go to the Edge Rater website and go to the uh, pricing page. You can, if you have purchased the full time, if you have a license to the full time pro version, click under Forever, download. If you're on a subscription, uh, annual or monthly, click on the download under those because uh, the, they are separate programs to the Forever uh, program. They actually, it's exactly the identical functionality. It's just that the pro version, the one-time purchase version, um, you, you, when you run it, you don't need to log in every time. It, it will just run. Uh, whereas the annual version and the monthly version, you need to actually sign in and you do require an internet connection to do that. So, but the actual functionality is the same within both programs. Um, okay, another one, will you implement Connor's moving average template from his booklet on moving averages? Yes, I'm planning to, well, in the Connor's library of of books, there's quite a few different uh, strategies and we have quite a few programmed in already uh, using the formulas that are uh, contained in the books. And you'll find those, uh, his new book, By the Fear, Cell Agreed, there's RSI Power Zones template and Crash template, um, both implemented. There's another five templates still to be done on there. Um, here's a bunch of Connors Strategies, short selling stocks with Connor's RSI, uh, VXX trend following strategy, 
So there's quite a few already, but the intention is to, you know, as time goes on and month by month, uh, we're just going to put more and more templates in. So these things will be fleshed out eventually. Um, let's see what else do we have? Do you still have the Alpha 21 template and are you using it? That is, uh, that is an interesting question. Alpha 21, was that ever, I'm gonna have to research on that. I, so the answer to am I using it obviously is no. <laughs> um, is it there? I know Alpha 21 was, was a script that you would manually run, whether it actually made it to a template and you have to forgive me, but I, I've written you know hundreds of these templates, and uh, it's really hard to know the details of every one. Uh, and also, I mean, for for users, I think it's it, it's really hard to know the details of every template, and I don't expect anybody to do that. But I know uh, everybody has their own flavor of things they like to uh, to run, and so that's why the favorites category exists. That you just put in the things that you you want in there. So let me see um, this Alpha Twenty One. Um, <laughs> and all I'm going to do to try and find that is just go to the um, the folder and just search in here for alpha. Right, so there's a template relative strength alpha 21. That's probably what you're referring to. The alpha 21 symbol list ranker. <clears throat> Yeah, so is it is there, <laughs> um, but obviously I haven't used it in a while. But yes, that is that is there. Uh, suggestion. Uh, okay, I think that is okay. So, so suggestion about after a new template is released, do a short live presentation of the template. Does anyone think that's a good idea? I think it's probably a good idea. Okay, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely do that. I mean, a lot of work goes into putting these templates together. And um, it, sometimes it's a bit of a rush to get it released by the end of the month. And sometimes I slip by a couple of days and then, and then I'm looking at, at what the next one's gonna be. But I think it's good to, to take a pause and spend some time on explaining what the template is and what it does uh, for sure. I always try to link to relevant documentation, but I think doing a live video uh, would, would help. ETF Training Bandit, <clears throat> oh, that is the other program, yes, and I will mention that. ETF Training Bandit is a, a program which runs the, um, there's a, a book available um, called High Probability ETF Trading. Um, I'm not sure, can anyone see my video screen? Am I, am I broadcasting my video? I'm really not sure if that if that is true. Can you see my video, anyone? Oh, not. Okay, so, oops, I don't know if you can see that. There's a book, High Probability ETF Trading. Um, seven Strategies to Improve Your Trading. It was released in 2009, and the strategies are, um, I would say, the, um, there's no, <laughs> it's, they're very mechanical strategies. And so I wrote the ETF trading bandit to implement the rules of those strategies. And it's a software program that's available to, on the Edge Rater website, ETF trading bandit. And this, this is actually a picture of what the program would look like. Again, it's row by row for the symbols and then columns for each strategy, RSI 2575, three day high low, R3, percent B, et cetera. And it will just give you buy, sell and hold criteria or, or signals for each of those each of those stocks for each of the strategies. Uh, ETF trading bandit, yeah, it's, very, it's a very simple to use program um, and it still performs well today, even after all those years since 2009. That's available, uh, let's take a look at, Go to the pricing page and come right down here. You have the light version of ETF Trading Bandit, which gives you J 
just the RSI 2575 strategy, uh, and that's free uh, for now. And then if you want to upgrade to the pro version, that will give you all seven of those strategies. And that is a lifetime license, $497, uh, pretty special deal. Okay, what else? Yeah, got that. Okay, let me take a look at the Q&A page. Ah, okay. All right, Q&A page. All right, let me go through that. So there is, can you put a link to the shared folder on one of the toolbars? I think that is a good idea. Standard deviation salt tickers and seasonal scan page. Okay, there's a question here about uh, combining templates. And I think that's something I want to get into next weekend when we, when we take a look in, into more detail. And next weekend I will talk about um, more advanced use of templates and we'll probably get into how to create your own uh, your own template and modify a template. Is there a way to use adjusted end of day data where the prices have been adjusted to reflect dividends? Fred, uh, the edge rated data provider has adjusted to to reflect dividends, so it just depends where you're getting the data from. But the edge rated data provider is adjusted. I know the Yahoo data provider is not, and I, I think the HGSI data provider is not, but the edge rated data provider has dividend adjusted data. Um, okay. Did, 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 did. You have a chart designer entries and exits trade simulation. Okay, so that's uh, something that we didn't get into. Now, this is really a basics webinar, but there is uh, we talked about the we talked about the templates tab where all the templates are. There are three other tabs in here too: chart designer, entries and exits, trade simulation, and there uh, for really doing. Well, except for chart designer, but entries and exits and trade simulation are really for doing manual back testing. So that's a topic for another day, but that's where you would do that. Any back testing that I have kind of coded already and provided in an easy to use form is implemented in a, in a template, but you can do your own manual back testing in these tabs. Oh, great, Dave. Yeah, Dave McMullen's online. Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, Connors is kind of has a lot of a lot of stuff going on with all the uh, strategy guides, the books, uh, etc. I believe at one point he also had a software program online called the Machine. I think some people were using. The cost uh, was was quite expensive. But then I believe they shut that down for, I think, um, because they were selling it to institutional clients and there was some restriction. I, I, can't, I don't know. But yes, it's an interesting character. Um, okay. So, Brock, if you're getting an error running a template which says invalid row or column index, um, what that normally means is that you have, uh, you probably want to re uh, download the data. You probably want to hit end of day update again, and that will just download the latest data. I would also shut down the program and restart it because it's, there's a potential that your data got into some weird state at some point. So close the program down, rerun it, update the data again, and you should be good to go. Okay, I think that's it. We went way over today. Uh, hopefully it was useful. And 
yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up now. So thanks all. I will be putting a link to the recording. Uh, well, I will send a link to the recording out to you all. And uh, thanks for spending some time on Saturday, is it Saturday today, Saturday morning. Great. And uh, looking forward, I uh, <laughs> hope everyone has a, a good week in the markets next week. What a week uh, this week was, eh? Wow. You're very welcome, Dave. Yeah, Abraham, Kevin, Jerry, Jeff, everybody, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. See you all next time.